Hi, this is Miss Sherry coming to you from my studio in Vienna, Virginia. Today I'm going to show you a few tricks to painting really nice rocks that will, will weather out really well outside um, and they'll last for years. You're going to first have to gesso, put gesso, which is a primer, on your rocks. Um, I have a few here you can see that I've done. Uh, the gesso could be clear, it could be white, or it could be black. Um, I prefer the black. I like the way the colors show up when you use the black. Here's some that we did a while ago on our Juan Moreau lesson. Here's one where there, there was clear gesso on the rock, so you can still see the gray rock coming through. And these were done on black. My most recent ones are the owl. And the hedgehog. Hedgehog even has little feet underneath there. So you look at the rock and see what it reminds you of. In order to gesso the rock, it's got to be clean. So wash and dry your rocks. And then just take a little bit of, I use Liquitex professional grade black gesso. You can get that at any art supply store. Little sponge brush, get it a tiny bit wet. I love these sponge brushes because they make cleanup very easy and they may, they get into all those little nooks and crannies on your rock. And there you have it, a gessoed rock. I'm going to put that aside, let it try, and I'm going to move to one that I already painted. Now, before I came down to my studio, I went to the internet because I want to paint a sloth on my rock. So I wasn't quite sure what that sloth might look like. So I went to the internet and I gathered some photos and I printed them to bring down here to the studio. And I'm just gonna put that down in front of me so I can use it for reference. And after your, after your rock is dry, you can just take a piece of plain old chalk and draw some of the shapes that you want to use in your drawing. So there it is. Um, and now I'm going to bring my paints over here. Uh, this is a Stay Wet palette. And what I like about this is that I can work on this paint rock painting Maybe a couple days I'll work on it until I'm finished because I want to go very slowly on it. So in this palette, there's a wet sponge underneath. So I've wet that with water and then there's a piece of special um, palette paper that the water um, gets absorbed by. And so the water comes through this and keeps your paints moist and it has a cover, which I have in the other side of the room, but when I'm done, I will cover all of this and it will stay wet for several days, sometimes even a week. So here it is. I'm gonna put my rocks out of the way for a minute. I'm gonna have my rock. I think I'm going to move everything over here and change the camera angle. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I'm going to start by mixing a background color just for his fur. So I usually start with the darkest value that's in the uh, picture. So I'm going to use 
a dark brown. And maybe I'll lighten it up a little bit with this ochre color, yellow ochre and burnt umber. Gives me a nice dark color. And I'm going to just go over him in some of the dark places. And just paint in some of the shapes that you see. The sloth likes to just hang out there all day and he moves very, very slowly. And don't worry about those uh, lines from the chalk. They will disappear eventually, okay? I'm going to add a little white to that color we just mixed. And that's going to be the lighter part on his face. Don't worry if you paint over your lines. You can find them again later. I think this branch is going to be a little lighter too, so I'll just put the branch in here now, a little bit of it. And I'm taking that color and I'm mixing it with the darker brown again to get another color of brown. And I'm just going to start putting a few of his hairs in. Don't worry if it doesn't look exactly the way you want it yet because it's going to take a lot of layers before we get to the point where it's the way we want it, okay? I'm using a smaller brush now to put his uh, claws in. He has to have very long claws and they're, they're light tan and though they're, they're gonna go up here and grab onto that branch. He's got, like I said, he's got very long ones that wrap around here. So you can make them kind of curvy. Using a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, put a little bit of a uh, lighter color into that branch. Now we need to use some different values in here to make the fur start showing up. So we've got dark, medium. Let's go a little lighter on the value by adding just a little bit of white to that mixture, which actually has a little bit of the ochre in it too. Just make lighten it up a little bit with your little brush. And that brush is probably a little thicker than I want it. But if you don't push very hard and you just use the point, you can get some of those individual hairs. I don't think I picked the best brush for this, but I have other brushes I can work, I can go get later. Just showing you how you just lightly touch with that lighter color. And I think the light is probably coming more from this side of him. But if it doesn't look right to you later, you just can go back and put some darks back in there, okay? I'm just adding some of his fur so you can see how it goes. As I was painting, 
my easel fell over with the camera, everything. So yeah, that's I'm learning how to do the videotaping. So this is not perfect, I realize. Um, I started with just bigger brush strokes in the darkest color in the back. So let's just do it on this one. And also, you're, we'll do two at once so you can see what I'm doing. Um, you know, always get your brushes wet. The darkest color I have is called Burnt Umber. And I'm going to take a little bit of Burnt Umber and I also have a color called um, Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to just take a little bit of that and I'm going to mix the two together. So it's a dark color, but it has a little more red in it. And then I'm just going to fill in the areas that I want to be dark. And try to just use a brush stroke to do it. Okay, you can come, all, you can come back later and correct this. But fill up your brush by going dabbing, 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 and making it into a nice shape on your brush. So you have a lot of paint on here. So you just go right on top of that line. But don't worry, if you miss the line, then you're going to go back. And when it's dry, all you have to do is wipe it off with water. Okay? So I'm making the darkest places on him. First. Then you can lighten it up a little bit with some white. And then you're going to make some little marks that are a little bit lighter. Try to remember where your light comes from in your picture. I'm going to make the light on this one come from the right side. So it's going to be a little bit lighter on the right side. And maybe it's going to be lit a little bit underneath so we can see the shape of him. After you get that second color in, take a skinnier brush or a finer brush and make a color that's a little bit lighter. This time I'm going to use the um, Burnt Umber with white. And on the side where I think the light shines, I'm going to just make a little fur marks here with this little brush. This is not the lightest color you're going to use. You're going to go back later with almost white. And then you decide where, where's the light in this little sloth. You know, the sloth teaches us a lot about patience. Right now, we need a lot of patience. We've been home a lot. We have to think of things to do. We have to wait for things. We can't go where we wanted to go before. Now, the sloth moves very, very slowly. And that's why I think he's a good example for us. I'm now loading this with almost a little uh, burnt umber and some white to get a very, very pale color. Um, and that color is also going to go like inside where his face is. It's lighter where his face is. So it's okay to make it a little jaggedy because he's got fur up there too. I don't like where I drew that eye. So I'm just going to draw another one right here. And you see how you can just go right over the chalk and it just disappears. The same color. making the edges really, really light so that they make give him some fur and make him stand out a little bit.
And I'm going to put a little white down here just to give them some shape. And I'm going to start the branch way over here. And then it's going to come straight across. See how I'm just pulling that across until I run out of paint. And the underside of it is going to be a little bit darker. So I put a little more of the burnt umber in there. Just a little more because the burnt umber is darker. And I'll just sketch in some lines. right on there. I might even make a branch that goes up over the top onto the back. Don't know what I'm going to do in the back yet, but I'm going to just put some of that lighter color. Now on the top of that branch, while it's still wet, I'm going to put a very light brown color. So I want to see the texture on this. So I'm just going to put some little texture at the top. I'm going to pull it straight. If you want to, you can use the back of your paintbrush and draw some little lines into it. That gives it a little more texture. And now I'm going to take the really skinny fine brush and I'm going to make his claws wrap around that branch because he's got very, very long claws. And I want them almost white. A little bit of the um, burnt, burnt uh, umber in it with a little bit of white. And they're going to curve over that branch. Again, you can scratch in if you want to add a little more lines in there or you can take the dark color and put the dark color where there's a shadow between these claws that he has. He has quite a personality, doesn't he? Now, he has these dark areas that come down from his eyes. I don't want them so dark that I can't see the eyes. But I do want to put some darkness in there. Now, with my little brush, I'm going to make the eyes really dark. In fact, I'm going to use Mars Black. This is all up to you, but I just think I want little beady eyes on there. And I don't really want to see any of the white around them, I don't think, at this point. So I'm just going to put, with my tiniest brush, I'm just going to make a little black area. And I'm going to do the same thing on the nose. Even though the gesso is black, I like to have another layer. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And I'm going to add some more fur. Um, I think I'm going to switch to my rigger brush and see if that is more of a fine point. So a rigger is made for fine brushwork that's making lots of motion. And you see how long, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, long the bristles are. That may or may not work. This is my experiment, so let's see. You get these nice curvy lines here to separate that head from the background a little bit. And up here on top, I'm going to put 
his claws just coming over from the other leg. Just a little bit. If you have trouble with a brush like I just did, you can let it dry and then paint over it, or you can take a little Kleenex, a little, maybe a little water, just wipe it away. And you can make those branches go anywhere you want. You know, later I'm going to just come back and put lots of leaves on them. I don't have the leaf color out because I thought I'd just show you how to do the branch and the sloth. So right now I'm just going to finish the sloth and you can just work on your own from this point. I'm putting a little more dark on the bottom of this one. Okay, we're almost done. Let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. So one little trick you can sometimes do with the white you know how I always tell you to put a little bit of shininess in the eyes because that makes them come alive. Let's see if I can do it with the camera on it. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to take the hard end of the paintbrush, not the paint, the brush part, and I'm just going to dip it in the white just a little bit and then carefully dot the eye. And then go over and carefully dot the other eye in the same place. Okay, now those are a little big, in my opinion. I'll let, let that dry, and then I can paint around them with a little black again. So maybe I needed a smaller paintbrush to do the dots. And then on the nose, it's just like right there. Um, I added a few extra... Um, for, uh, more fur on him by, by using different values of color. So if you take your burnt umber and you add white, you get a lighter value. At the very end, I just did the lightest colors that I could, which is, you know, the lightest light of the browns, and then keep adding white until you get a very, very light color. And at the end, I just add little tiny white strokes at the edges just to give it a little more definition. You know? And I also add more white where I think the light is hitting him, maybe over here on the right a little bit. And that divides his front leg from his back leg. Makes it pop out. As soon as this gets dry, which should be just a minute, it doesn't take that long for um, acrylic paint to dry, I'm going to paint some leaves and branches around the back side, and maybe I'll make up some flowers to add there too. If you want to draw this ahead of time, and if that makes you feel more comfortable, go ahead. Just use the chalk like we did before and put some chalk lines in here.
I want to have a different value in that green, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to put some, maybe a little bit of yellow in it and a little bit of white. And after rocks are dry, you have to go outside and you have to have somebody, an adult, help you with this. Unless you are an adult, of course. Um, and here's what I buy. Helmsman Spar Varnish. And this one is satin. And I put three coats on these. Took it outside and I sprayed them. It took me a know a few times because it has to dry an hour and a half between you know times so good luck with rocks there's all kinds of things you can do Ms. Sherry saying bye-bye happy creating